Hey everyone, this is Alaska from Call Out Culture. Um, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And if you are enjoying the podcast and you feel inspired to start your own, let me tell you about the system that we use. It is called Anchor. Best things about Anchor, it's free. There's tools that allow you to create and record and edit your podcast right from your phone and your computer. Um, you can even add a song from Spotify directly from you to your episodes. The possibilities are endless of what you could create, whether it's like music analysis or your own radio show or something that the world's never heard before. I don't know what that is. You figure that out. Not my job. Yours. Anchor is going to distribute the podcast for you so it'll be heard on Spotify, Apple, and all the other podcast things you can use. Like All you do is you upload your podcast and boom, it appears in the other feeds. Um, you can also make money through uh, advertisements like this, or you can also set up like your own sort of Patreon fan support thing. Um, there's no minimum listenership, and uh, everything you need to make your podcast is in one place. So if you want to do a podcast, you want to be like us here at Call Out Culture, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get started. Hey, Call Out Culture listeners. I want to let you know about a new sponsor for Call Out Culture. That's right. We're brought to you today by Manscaped, who is the best below-the-waist grooming champions of the god darn world. That's right, Manscaped. They're going to give you precision engineering tools around your family jewels. No more of those rusty scissors with glue on them that your kids are using. No more of those weird, like kitchen drawer scissors that you're going to use that might give yourself a homemade vasectomy you're getting the top of the line tools with their fourth generation trimmer the lawnmower 4.0 you heard that right it's 4.0 and it's the lawnmower you ever seen the fenway park outfield where they do the sock in the middle of the field you could do that with your junk with the 4.0 trust me i've done it and i've got the green monster well it used to be green but now it's not anymore that's right so there's over 2 million men worldwide who have used Manscaped and trust Manscaped, and you could get down with this by using the exclusive offer. You're going to get 20% off, free worldwide shipping, if you use the code COC20 at manscaped.com. So you put that code in at checkout, you're going to get hooked up with the whole thing. That's right, 20% off, free shipping, that code again, COC20, and just go to manscaped.com. That's 20% free shipping manscaped.com and the goddamn code is coc20 unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job manscaped no more having to use the power sander fellas manscaped the lawnmower 4.0 get your shit tight get it right and go to manscaped you can even get other things like underwear you could get weird like not weird i guess good smelling lotions to put down there and make your stuff not smell like bleachy and weird like you've been running around all day you get it all just use the code coc20 at manscaped.com and you will get 20 percent off free shipping and a beautiful set of balls that you can put on your christmas tree if you want show your family everybody will be proud they'll be like look at my son's balls they're so taut so well shorn and that's all because you went to Manscaped. So be the pride of your mom. Be the jewel in her eye. Go to manscaped.com, mother efforts. Peace. Welcome to Call Out Culture Podcast with Alaska Curly Castro. Rock. Hey, hey, hey. Go out culture. We're here. We took a break of every rare needed break. But we're back again. Uh, we've been catching up on our Wu Tang shows. We've been watching Marvel What Ifs, watching the Sopranos movie, which I didn't enjoy. Um, we're here. So if you want to talk about those other things, maybe we'll do a Patreon episode. There's been a lot of cool stuff out lately. Yeah. But uh, I've gone uh, back to watching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I just watched the first season. Wow, yeah. that was. You remember when that show started? They they like won a contest on FX and got a show. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. And then somehow yeah. Danny DeVito came and made it just like the funniest <laughs> show on TV at the time. Yeah, that was yo. That that show aired. The first season aired when I graduated college. Wow. And I graduated college 
15 or no, what 17 years ago. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah. All, but other things we're checking out mostly is the new album, Little Robert Hutton mm-hmm. by Call Out Culture Podcast Own. Curly Castro. Curly Castro. What up? Curly Castro. Um, Alaska has been saluting and celebrating this record to anyone who will listen yeah, for man. seemingly weeks, saying it's a masterpiece. It's better than Illmatic. It's the, the greatest piece of Brooklyn to, to, to Philadelphia art in the last 37 years. And he was right. It's yeah. definitely better. It is. Uh, it's, it's like a light rail from New, from Brooklyn to Philadelphia. <laughs> the all elusive light rail. With the, the azalea, with, with, with the one cart, you could just get the espressos on, yeah, read exactly. a paper and take your shoes off. Yeah. So I'm definitely of the- don't, don't take your shoes off on the train. <laughs> The rest of the Maybe car is like that. The rest of the train is that movie, like that train from the movie that goes through the mountain. Oh know, yeah, it was called. That movie sucked. But oh, um, the um the one with Jake Gyllenhaal, he was half a body. No, that, that's a an actual. Really no, the one um the oh, one I just man. watched for the first time. They turned it into a series, and it was like yeah, a, the one yeah. I just watched. What was yeah, that called, it Castro? In it. Yes. What was that called? I just watched it for the first time. It was like a course like commercial. But with, what's uh, the name joint? The, the one I just oh, watched. It's, it's HBO about, uh, Snowpiercer. The, uh, Snowpiercer. Oh, that Snowpiercer. was a bad movie. That was the pretty movie good. Was all right. The movie oh, was all right. Oh, so bad. The series it was, was good. weird to me. The series, I'm not, I, I, the movie, I'm not the, sorry. So, Alaska, the movie had to be shrunk. But, they, you know, you wanted to spend a little bit of time in, in the cars. But some of them were just visual marvels. I didn't really want to know. Right. Oh, did the rich people go through the, the aquarium car to go sit down? And then, you know, I, I didn't really you know care about that but yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just remember people like geeked on that movie and i watched it. i was like this shit is ass cheeks i just liked it because it was chris <laughs> evans before cap and i was like oh this is pretty it was during it, cap it, it was during cap well yeah i mean but it was before it was before cap became cap it was before that was his only job right yes it was, it was before cap became a phenomenon i'm just saying that's yeah that's yeah saying. oh yeah you're right about that you're definitely right about that um so here we here's what we're gonna do for uh, our live from the liner notes on little robert hutton um, we got a lot of great questions on Twitter on our Cold Call Pod uh, feed. So I want to kind of go back and forth between maybe some points me and Alaska want to touch on, maybe some stuff Castro wants to get out there to the people directly on our platform here. Brought to you by Manscaped, and um, and see what the party people want to say about this record. A lot, a lot of great questions. Just skimming through, I saw them a little bit earlier before we started recording. Nice. Um, oh, and shout out to uh, Caltrops Press for that ill write up on um, oh, yeah, Weapons 13X. Incredible stuff. Yeah. It's worth reading. So, Kelly Castro, this is what I want to know. Um, when did you come up with the title for this album? Because you're a title guy. I'm a big title guy. Big title guy. Um, titles are pretty important to me. Mm-hmm. I really don't. Um, I'm not too much in the practice of um, working on a project I haven't given a title to. Mm, why um, is that? Um, I feel like a project needs some direction, especially when it's my project or if, or unfortunately for people to work with me when I'm working on a project. That's correct. I, 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 get, I, I, agree. I throw a big monkey wrench into everything that's happening until we get a title. That's just the way I work. A lot of people don't, but like I feel like a title gives you some direction, gives you a... Um, an umbrella is a nice phrase I like to use. It gives you a proper umbrella so then the yep. raindrops can fall where, where you want them to fall when you have the proper umbrella. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's direction. It's, it's right. very directional. So um, once I get that title, then I can start churning things out. I could see if um, songs fit the, um, the album or if they're two way out of base or if they neatly fit the, the, the last corner of the umbrella, if I could still tuck it in. You know? uh-huh. It. and how did how and when did this title come up so oh sorry um you did ask me that um yeah. i actually had this title in the cut i usually have titles like in my head mm-hmm. for projects in the future um zilla knows that like so i have like next couple of projects I already have the titles somehow and if, so when i start attacking that i can give people that type of precursor so they can know like when i get beats and stuff like that yo i'm working on such and such right do you have anything yeah so um i usually have the title so i had this title pretty much like after tosh when we started working on shrapnel 
Mm-hmm. I said I wanted to do um I wanted to do Little Robert Hood. Um the title was important to me to um it's what I call like extenuate his name. So like mm-hmm. his name was Little Bobby as an abbreviation, like a slang the nickname a lot of people get when they, you know, in the streets, whether they're fighting injustices or fighting each other, you know, you get nicknames. So right. the fact that it was Lil, I felt like to give it his proper dignity, let me stretch everything out to his proper Mm. Uh, full spelling so little cool. robert which is you know with the his, his name is robert his nickname is bobby and hut nice yeah what so, um i'll go ahead for the last so i was gonna say for people who don't know who is little robert hut okay so uh, there you go <clears throat> little bobby joined the um black panther party in, in 1966 at that time he was 16 years old so he was um subsequently the first member to join and the youngest member at the same time mm. he was he was also um what you would call first blood people familiar with like christmas addicts and like when the first blood was drawn in the mm-hmm. war between um pretty much the fbi and the fbi and the police against the black panther party he was one of the first casualties <clears throat> so he became a, um unfortunately he became a martyr and a symbol for the movement very early on um nice ambitious young man knew what he wanted to do and he set an example even at his young age while he was alive for other people to follow and join the part the panther party he was definitely um the, the copy he wanted to carve it you mm. know what i'm saying and when i was thinking too when i when i played this record i mean it, I, I said to you on the phone like what's so dope about this album is it everything everything it clicks you know what i mean it's like it's like getting a bunch of Lego pieces out of a box and like everything snaps in where you want it to be from the title to the artwork and packaging to the song titles to the guests. Like mm-hmm. what was when you decide to call little Robert Hutton and, and like everything you're saying, like is based on you want to give as, as much dignity and respect as possible because it's based on a real person. Like, how did you come up with the art? Because you could have just you could have just had a picture of him. You know what I mean, and call it a day. Yeah. Um. So I had a tagline for the for the album. I was like, I had this idea of um, what if little Bobby was armed or weaponized with the Afrofuturism mm. of today? So an abstract concept, but like, um, you know, let's say like for people that know uh, comics, there's a character named Forge and he's a builder. And he can build yep. stuff. So let's say more mother had the powers of Forge and built like this Afro, you know, Afro futurism type device that could be used against Hoover back in the sixties and seventies. How, right. dep- how would the party have um, functioned? And pretty much it's just a metaphor for um, little Bobby one. Why, when you want to um, embrace the struggle, do you have to sacrifice your life? And at mm. such a young age. So right. it's like the little Bobby to me is like the death of innocence uh-huh. um, because of the age he was. And so I was just wondering as, as advanced as the black people and culture have become now, would we have been more nuanced and able to adapt to some of the ill methods of Cohen Self Pro? But that's pretty, that's pretty heavy. And, w- and what I like too about what you did with the artwork was like on the front cover, the who, so who's the three people in the front? Okay. Yeah. So sorry. Um, that's what I wanted. My to bad. Tell. You got to keep, keep reminding me when these two part questions come <laughs> high. Okay. So, um, so then, a professional so interview or it's okay go ahead okay so the artwork so then i was like i wanted to do an image of little bobby and the afrofuturism part would be him um adapting to the phalanx warlock disease which is a biotechnical organic disease that fuses man and machine yep. and in this case mutant and machine yes. um it's an x-men character <clears throat> Warlock is the character. The phalanx is his race and the uh, um, biomechanical thing. So if you look at the cover, you'll see little Bobby um, covered in that. And that's usually how Warlock is, um, unifies with somebody to make like a union. Mm. And then the two people behind them are Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale, the founders of the Black Panther Party. And so I, I, I hired my man Ron Puma because he's just the greatest. Mm-hmm. at drawing like surrealistic um things so like with what i like about Puma is you can give him something in real life and tell him to augment it a certain way and you don't have to communicate with you don't have to go tip for tat nick from that he he'll just be like okay and then wherever he goes it's so easy to follow 
So I told him, um, I didn't tell him to put Huey and, and Bobby in that picture. He put them in there. He, and then he put the, well, we talked about it. I had Anubis head on Bobby. And then I had, and then he came up with the lion head on Huey. And he dressed mm. them that way. I didn't tell him to do that. That's actually a famous picture of um, Bobby and Huey standing in front of a, a Black Panther headquarters. And behind them, you see the stencil says Black Panther. It's a pretty famous picture. You see the stencil on the window. And he took that pose and put them behind. I, I did ask him to do the back cover to honor another of our fallen um, chairman, Fred. And I, and to me, Fred Hampton is Black Bolt. Black Bolt's another comic book character mm. whose ability to, um, he, his, his speech is deadly. As soon as he opens his mouth and says one word, he can level a planet with his word. And he's, he looks at you and says, no, he can crack a planet in half. And so to me, that was Fred Hampton. He was able to crack a planet in half with, it, with his, uh, the power of his voice. Mm. And so um, I want him to make a hybrid of that. So if you look at the back cover, you have Freddie Hampton with mutton chop sideburns. Mm -hmm. He's wearing the Black Bolt suit and he's using the power of his voice at a podium with the Wrecking Crew logo emblazoned on it. Yeah. So I was, I was pretty specific with Puma in terms of like the images I want, but he has the skill to cartoon. To me, you know, make it into a comic book image. I don't think I was going for people to think that this was like a comic book version. Right. Of what Castro does, but employing Puma and just the way I was able to express these thoughts with the comic book imagery, I guess it was only one way to go. So I have no problem with that. But again, that gives me, uh, and so I had him working on that from like after I recorded about two songs. That that helps me ha have direction and um in a certain focus and way, just the same. Mm. Yeah, that shit is crazy. So, um. Actually, you answered my question. Never mind. I was going to ask you to do the artwork, and I was like, oh, no, you did it. Sorry, I told you I was tired. <laughs> um, so, yo, there's like, there's a lot of guest spots on this record, and they're all mm -hmm. seem very like deliberate. Yes. You know, like you you chose these people to play per certain roles and certain instruments throughout. Carol like, yes. says hi. Yeah, Eloise says hi. Um, so, you know, what was the thinking behind that? And is there anybody that you didn't get that you wanted to get? Um, well, I can answer the second question first. I wanted to get more mother on the record and we mm. actually had some early communications about getting her on a song. She would have been on, um, uh, the switches. Okay. Ooh. So I thought that would have been cool. Um, it's a remix <clears throat> remix, but yeah, definitely in the future. I, I can see if I can get the goddess on something. Mm. So, the, um, <clears throat> Alaska, it was a thought early on is like, um, I use this metaphor, I didn't want to make a big pun or Fat Joe record. And when I say that, if you go, as soon as you look at big pun and Fat Joe records and you flip it to the back, the song titles will be in white and all the features will be in yellow. Mm -hmm. And if you would go, there'd be a feature on every track. Every and you track, would, and yeah. what you could do, the game was to count the tracks where they were just solo, which would only yeah. be like two or three. So I wasn't trying to go for that, but I definitely had ideas in mind for when I was crafting songs that, oh, this one needs a feature. So that was before I even asked the people to feature on it. Like this one, I, I want this to have a feature. So some of the songs took on their own life that needed, um, that I that I felt like it required an assistance. Um, Breeze Bruin, I wasn't going to pass that out. Uh, like I had an opportunity to work with him. Yeah. So I wanted to get a crazy beat for that. Um, the like song you're stuff. Yo, Ooh. most definitely. The song you're on is bucket list stuff. Like, you know, working with you was always a blessing. And I had an idea of, um, I track Owens, which to me translates to like run, nigga, run. Mm -hmm. And I needed cats that were adept at rapping fast, not fast, mm -hmm. but just just rapping urgently. Like I wanted it to feel like you were out of breath and you couldn't couldn't relax in the song. So I knew I had to hire you and I knew I had to hire a sketch. Um, <clears throat> F stands for Hampton. I said, I want to do a song about Chairman Fred. And then I said, you know what? Why not? I get all my Chicago MC homies on it since mm. Chicago was his stomping ground. Mm -hmm. I just that that song wrote itself in terms of like all the phone calls I had to make to get that together. Um, the song Killmonger was right with Lyft and Woods. That one started growing on its own. Um, I just knew I wanted so so the song pretty much is about uh, you know it's about cops and their ill ways, but it's um, my verse is like the centerpiece where it's like. We know about cops and a lot of their um, 
demonic activities. But when right. we learn about cops and we, and we interact with cops as we're growing up, we see them on television all the time. We see them in comedies all the time. But when you call a cop in real life, Officer Mahoney doesn't show up with a quip. I love and, the Officer Mahoney line. And, 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 um, and, Mahoney. and Wilson doing the sound effects. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's yeah. how up. You know, um, Carl Winslow doesn't show up. Shoot, Riggs and Murtaugh don't show up on the scene to, you know, help you jump off a building and laugh it off. Like, that's yeah. not who shows up. Who shows up is um, um, do the right thing, cops. Yeah. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yes. Good uh, call. When, when, when Mo and Yo Black, you know, what's their name? Mo and Yo Black. Those are the cops that show up. Officer True. Pon- Ponzi. With or for, or Herc from the, like from the that. Wire. You got Herc from right. the Wire showing up. Right. He, yeah. So, like, to me, that's this weird dichotomy we learned growing up is like you, right. you have interactions with cops in reality, but then we're, we're fed this other reality through comedies. And, and like, our, Axel Foley doesn't show up. With the banana in the tailpipe, and that's that was the thing, and I was just like, "That's so weird." So then, <laughs> Woods came with the ill verse of all of the cops, so people that play cops, and and, and, and yeah, the dichotomy the, of that. The the ice, ice tea, tea. And James Todd. ice yeah. tea, and, um, and Cool J <laughs> shooting out on the same street, coincidentally, yeah. and then his, you know, fra- his zoom in shot. and see you in the background. Yeah. His phrase, his phrase though, um, "gun never jam, clip never empty." That yeah. shit is crazy because in a, in a movie. The gun never jams. The clips never empty. This is fantasy. What are we doing? And then mm-hmm. Lyft brings it home with the Lyft, um with the searing verse. Yeah, Lyft goes off on that verse. Yeah, he does. That he like, that's like prime Lyft right there. Salute 100%. to the guy right there. I was so happy when I got that back. So, yeah. um, and then there's the shrapnel track, which I thought was just fitting to start and to not not let people forget that we still got those type of blades. And it was like mm-hmm. a shrapnel track with a beat change and stuff. So, um. Salute to Zilla. He wrote one of the best verses he's ever he's ever written. Yeah, Zilla really like, that verse. Thanks, guys. Um, and that was just wrecking. Cool. So it was like some of these tracks were destined to to have features. There wasn't any way I felt like I was going to execute them without. And um, even the first song with Margell, that's something I crafted along. It took me a while to get that together with Margell and Candice. And I just felt like it was necessary. To, long, long, you know, long answer short, it was just necessary. For the songs to reach their full potential. Yeah. So, so speaking of like the beginning of the record, I got I got two questions. Yes, sir. One, who produced the opening track? Like the the track that Marcus scratches on. Right. That's the man, Locus. Okay. Um, reason I was wondering is I thought I heard a sound in there that was uh-huh. like a, a griff sound. Um, but oh, okay. I, I, I it might have been in the scratches or something. I just don't imagining. give the bad boy credit that he deserves. He gets enough for what he got. He, he gets does. no extras. motherfucker. Um, and then you know it's like five minutes before a voice. Yes, before well, before your not, voice, before my voice. Yes, yeah. yes. So, so, so what was the thinking behind that? I, was, I love it. it. I think it's brilliant. Well, it was twofold. It was one. I felt like the album needed to open up with the main focus in hand. And that's like honoring, you know, little Bobby. Yeah. So I found that clip and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take it on some Karis one shit. And I can hit up Mark and say, Yo, cut this whole shit. Like I could have gave him pieces. Yeah. I was right. like, no, slash this whole thing because the narrative that that young man is saying is important to hear a young man talk about little Bobby yeah. in that in that full verbose way and talk about how he's inspired him. So I felt like that was important. And then um, the second track, which um, I'll say for people that don't know how to pronounce it, it's called A-A-V-E and Saltfish, which is a play on a dish called Aki and Saltfish. And A-A-V-E is African-American vernacular English. And the song is just about uh, cultural appropriation and shit, right? Mm. So um, it has one of the um, refrains I always wanted to use. Like, this is like a three album long idea to use mm. this that part, that cadence. Um, that chain gang song, um, and it, just to use that—that's the sound of the man working on the chain gang. Get back! Mm. Ah. Ooh, ah. Mm. Ooh. Ah. So that's, I remember that's, the trailer for that movie, dude. Yeah, and like man, Charlie Pete, Sheen in it. It's my man, and I remember like everybody, at least from my age, everyone would just like say that shit. Yeah, just and from it the was, trailer, it's, the but it's so, it's so catchy, <laughs> and it's a thing that they actually did. Cadence. In this military prisons. So, um, so last, so what I did was. The way that song came together is funny because I I told Margell what to do, and he didn't do what I asked him to do. He did something better. So at awesome. first, I I'll admit he did not do what I asked him to do. 
like that was that's what happened but then he actually did something better and he had created a whole nother musical piece with the piano that's him playing and stuff like that so yeah, i had to put that together it. with um those four g doves banging his feet and so that's that's what created that arrangement so then when later on when i was putting the album together and stuff like that i was like you know what i'm rapping a lot i, I go first on shrapnel songs almost by tradition now um we have a wrecking crew record i'm, I'm jumping off on those i'm usually like the jump off cat i'm like rebel Deck. ins and shit Deck. Deck. and that's I, I take the spirit of deck real seriously so I felt like on this record, I can give people a break. They don't have to hear me just rap, rap, rapping from the gate as soon as the beat starts. And it'll help paint the picture and set the focus the way I properly want it to. Excellent. Yeah. The um, Oh, you know what's funny about the movie Cadence? So it stars, what's his name? Charlie Sheen, right? Mm-hmm. It's directed by Martin Sheen. Uh-huh. And there's a small role in there by their brother, Ramon Estevez. Ramon. Not even Emilio. Not, Not even Emilio. Emilio. Wow. He's the well, fourth Emilio child born out. to Martin Sheen and Janet Templeton. Ramon. I gotta Ramon Estevez. I got to see which Ramon, one is Ramon. The movie Cadence. He looks like all of them. Of course. You're getting money. And Lawrence Fishburne's in that shit, too. I forgot he was in that movie. Yep. It's a great movie. Ramon Estevez looks more like Emilio. He's got more of like a long face. I'm looking at a picture of him now. Uh, dope. Why don't we do this? Why don't yeah, we take our first say, man scrape break? break? Manscape on the man. It's not scrape. manscape. Manscape <laughs> is not part of the Man's, podcast. Manscape. Shouts to Manscape, our biggest, best sponsor. Uh, little Robert Hutton. There's no way to tie these things. That little Robert Hutton on live from the Liar Notes Culture, brought to you by Manscape. Uh, <laughs> no as, it, as it was threat. destined to happen. Yeah. There's no common no. thread, but it was destined to be this other way. Other than destiny, there's no common thread Sheesh. other than destiny. You know what I mean? We'll be back. Call Out Culture. All right. Shabla. Hey, what's up, Call Out Culture listeners? It's your boy, Jason Griff. I'm here today to tell you about my new album, Fireside Chats. I flipped a bunch of punk rock samples, made a bunch of dope beats out of them, got a bunch of dope rappers to rap on them. Everybody from Call Out Culture will be there. Zilla Rocca, Curly Castro, Alaska. Shit, Alaska's there twice. I got Alex Ludovico, I got Billy Woods, I got Juggernaut. Of course, my homie Scorsese is on it. And we got it available today at insubordinaterecords.com. You can get 10% off with the promo code CALLOUT. Fireside Chats, check it out. Peace. 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 Double Down, boy. New album, Vegas Vic from yours truly, Zilla Rock. First solo album since 96 Mentality. Out on Chong Wizard Records. Right now, available around the world. You can cop the digital on iTunes if you want. You can buy it for a G on Bandcamp if you're a real boss like that. However you want to get it, we got tapes, very limited, CDs also. Beautiful vinyl, all the artwork designed by PQ. Got everybody from Call Out Culture Record Crew in the mix. Album executive produced by Disco Vietnam. Just joining us, fly, energetic, fun. Roulette tables popping. Free drinks all night with the cherry in there. Whatever you want to get, we're doubling down. We're going to get in the car. We're riding out to America's Flavor. Vegas Vic, Zilla Rocka, new album. Out now. Boom. Back from the Manscaped break here in our man cave while we mansplain. Everybody's wow. Wow. Yo, I'm um, revitalized. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I I had my my Manscaped product in my bag recently when I went to Sedona for a week, and wouldn't you know it? The only thing that exploded from the pressure of the cargo was the Manscaped crop revitalizer, the spray. spray. So, oh, the spray. It, it ended up being all over my son's toothbrush. <laughs> Why did it like explode? Deodor- I don't know. Why? It just it just Why did. Why did your make- son's toothbrush so close to stuff you spray on your nuts? Because you have I have the, one carry all to, to have everything. He, he's not, he's not worthy of having bag? his own carry all yet. Didn't you, have that? In, didn't you have it in that leather pouch? Yes. So, but I had but all my toiletries. Son, but you put your oh, yeah, because all he has he has one toothbrush so, in his so own Alaska, little toothpaste. What he did was he used it for non mindscape items. Yeah, yeah like all thing. my shit was in there. Like yeah. I had like yeah. moisturizer. I had my beard washing foam was in there. I had my deodorant. I had that's where you went wrong. Skin creams. It's like it's like trying spray. to use third. It's like trying to use third. So you party. put like instead of just throwing a raw toothbrush into a bag, then you put it in like a Ziploc bag or something. 
No, I just threw the he roll toothbrush in there. He said we're men. Who toothbrush. cares? <laughs> we're men. Why'd you throw? I'm gonna wash toothbrush. it off when I land. When, when I when I go to that, the hotel, I Yo, wash. All it I do is I put foil paper on the tip and I keep it rock. That's foil what I paper. Do. Foil I take a little rip of wallpaper, put it on the tip, and throw foil it on the back. Paper. I've been Yo, doing you put foil in anything. You, I love you, Yo, man. You, you so, foil so is your saving grace. It's like your duct tape. Uh, <laughs> just like, I just cook. I just cook some in a foil bowl, put it right on the plate, and just open it up like a flower, yeah. and start to cut right through. Easy, it keeps it clean. Yeah, we talked about that. that. Yeah, you just ball the foil. Sometimes, like, I don't want to. Like, I'll make like, like Stouffer's French bread pizza, and I don't want to get. <laughs> I haven't had that in years. I'm about to pop some. The pepperoni. I don't want to get like the the pan dirty, so I'll make one out of foil where I fold up the edges. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yo, when you make when you melt in butter for your little lobster, yep. yeah, it's it's nothing but a foil, foil. cup, man. Wow. Yeah. yeah no, I need. To, I haven't life. had French pan. That was my go to forever. And it was my good. Car. I totally oh, forgot good. about you it. You get the crispiness. Oh, I'm in getting my that. girl's oh, car because she keeps throwing out my ashtrays anytime. Like I have an ashtray, a shot glass, and yeah. catch ashes. When I smoke, she, I think she, I swear she's throwing it out the window. So I'll have my little foil portable thing and pull out my pocket, wow. open it up, and have a foil ashtray. I'm telling you, man, foil is the great equalizer. It really That's is. Crazy. It's a phenomenal thing. Yo, the the, the one man. thing that sucks, sucks about Stouffer's is it takes like nine hours to cook. Oh, it's like cooking Thanksgiving no. turkey. Straight it's like up. little strips of cheese on it. You yeah. really got to cook it. But you but really as long as you get the crispy cr- crust on the bottom, is it worth well, it? Cooks, it's worth it, it, all the trials and well, tribulations. Well, I will say... <laughs> I will say um, it might be Stouffer's, but that cooking bag, that shit was perfect. That yes. crisping bag, if you ever mm-hmm. use that thing, it yeah. really works. Or oh, that yeah. crisping like pizza tray thing they have now where they yep. you flip that thing over. It really flip it works. over, yeah. That's for like right. Mama yeah. Celeste, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what pizza is always trash no matter how you cook it? Ilios. Worst. That shit yeah, is Ilios doggy is trash. Like, Something your parents it, it was, bought it, at BJ's on the bottom shelf. Yeah, bro. Just it, put it, it in the toaster. You could put it's when you want to feel like you're in second grade again on pizza. Because <laughs> it's Cause definitely it school. Is. It's definitely school grade. Yeah. Yo, pizza. what's the cutoff for Elio's? 18? You can't eat no goddamn Elio's after 18 years. No, old. you can't, you can't you buy that. I've had Elio's in the last 14. five years. When you Ew, stop eating spam, I bought it from my daughter. Stop eating, she didn't want all right, that's like, fair. All right, fuck it. I'm when you stop it. eating bologna and you stop eating spam, you stop with the Ilios. Yes, Ilios yeah. is that's no boy. And then bro. even if you're young, you could get a DiGiorno's. Nobody's saying yeah, get the DiGiorno's. Like yeah. DiGiorno's, like, DiGiorno's is fire. I got the little window, like DiGiorno's. You know, got the little window to show you. Yeah, the they got, yeah. You know, one is really good on the low. The Paul Newman joint. Oh, Newman Zone. Yeah, I never had the pizza. Zone is pretty good. I, never I, sh- I love all that. new and zone products. I'm on board. Yeah, the lemonade him. is tight. Like he, he you know, some Yo, of the, the, the ranch dressing tight. that's yeah, popping. The Italian, nice. the I don't fuck dressing. with it, but yeah, salads. I, yeah, that's always like a staple when you have salads. People yeah, get bro. that like that, that's, three pack that's of official. That shit. Yeah, that's what official tissue. On. So anyway, is he still alive? No, he died long ago. He's my man, but he all the shit gets donated to kids and shit. He didn't take any money off them. Um, but anyway, so back to life of the night notes. Brought to you by Newman's own pro black bandanas. We you know it. <laughs> Newman's own. Uh, so we got so many good questions from our, our uh, Twitter. So if you're not following us on Twitter, I mean, the fuck are you doing? Uh, our Twitter is cool. We got the Instagram. We got our YouTube still Patreon. Shout out to our new subscribers. And we get every month we get a couple more subscribers. A lot of overseas cats fucking with us. So shout out to people Hello. overseas spending that yen. Um, okay. So. People got some good questions and I want to get to them, but very quickly before I do, um, what Alaska, what's your favorite song? Little Robert Hood. Oh man. Um, ah. this is a tough one. Um, I'm going to say, uh, it's a lot of really good songs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with, I really like Raytheon and Brunello. Run, move tops like Bishop and Jew. Try to go for the gusto like Nutso would do. Surveying on my land, Ray Nathan and Romello. Lolly hung goggles, the eagle set off a girl. And mama brother's ether, Paul Mooney to a preacher. Bobby cut him foot when I'm walk away from pizza. Five hard beaters, which it ain't rain neither. And mama brother's rock him who says follow the leader. Need to be more lower, get your SS cheaper. Ever love my other piece to my brother Easter. We gotta hold each other accountable. I'm in ride.
Ray Nathan. Uh, oh, Ray Nathan. Sorry, I, I, I always read it as Raytheon. I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's my favorite call. Uh, my my yeah. favorite floor chemical uh, for and cleaning. And I really like Capoeira space. Recall as well. Yeah, like, that shit so, is tough. Uh, yeah, Ca- right what, Castro, what's your what's your favorite song? Oh, um, that's hard. Come back to me. Come back to me. Okay. What about you? Uh, oof. I think this is hard for me. My f- all right, I'll say this. F stands for Hampton. That's really good. Um, because I'm I'm a big time believer almost 10 years deep now about Castro and Blueprint collabos since they mm-hmm. did a song called Fly Away off Small Pro's album Gigantic. And it's way before me and Castro became good friends with Print. It was just them two rapping over a small pro beat. So I urge everyone to pause this, go look up small pros album, gigantic and peep Castro and print just rhyming together, which is ill, but, and then well, print also did the first song on Castro's album Fidel. Now they call me Castro. Yeah. Which is we, we, we opened so many fucking shows or closed shows. Yeah, that so song. It was a lot of statement. that shit is crazy. Um, so I think F stands for Hampton is my favorite song potentially but it's kind of like a posse cut to me so i don't want to cheat and i and all the cats on the song like i love it i love you know your your ear and eye for detail with the chicago angle like you've talked about um but that's not like a solo song i think my favorite solo song then is probably because there's so many guests uh that are crazy on this shit I guess my favorite solo song is tied. I, I think it's probably Cujo Taught Me. I think yeah, it's my favorite, just pure Grim, solo Castro mm-hmm. song. Castro Massa, check me. One, two. Oh, what the sham? MC's missing a brain. Going insane or a phantom pin. Here back tight to the 80s of fame. Lose sight of selfie and never maintain. Not sure anymore. We're not going to be door. Nobody know Cujo said he won. You hang club wreck on still by the door. If things get strange, got a lemon ready for Kill a killer team. Dance call a sing. Mike Knight fights and clubs and crowd kings. Like a boot, like a all the same team. Cash on, disappear, smash all of my machine. Five foot torch, super five green. Why I'm sucking mother talk ill of a team. The one ear man soon calls up king. When the valley is deaf, you begin to head for rain. Uh, Ray Nathan Romello is like, like very close behind too, only because. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I have a backwards. I have a soft spot for Bleak Shadows because Mo Better Blues is like top two or three Spike movies for me ever. Yeah. And I no. love that you dedicated some shit to them. And I'm kind of pissed that you did it before I did. But. I get it because it's Fanon and, you know, that shit is hard. So, yeah, it's kind of like a cop out answer. I think F stands for Hampton, but like for just you, it's Cujo taught me. And shouts, shouts to Griff on the beat. Yeah. No. So, yeah, um, I, so we, my, got, my, go sorry, go ahead, Castro. Go ahead. Yeah, my favorite is um, twofold. So it's Ray Nathan and Romello. Mm. I love I love that blueprint beat. I love it. And I, and I, I really it. like what I, when I was saying, I give my brother a shout out. Yep. And it's just about brotherhood, and I, I just I felt I felt moved to talk about that, especially with the overarching, <clears throat> you know, little Bobby gave his life for his brotherhood, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's it, important. There, there's a nice tie-in with the Ghetto Brothers in there too, like yep. and sort and of uh, Black Benji did the same yep. thing. Yep. Yeah. And so I, I have a little Ghetto Brothers sample at the end. That's where I got the hook from. Yeah. Yes. Um, I love so, it. So um, First you get more. With that the yeah, late '60s proud. group. Ooh. Um, Afro, um, Latino, yeah. Afro, and hard. their story is so ill too. Did it they have is. a movie about them? Like they a documentary? Did, yeah. yeah, that documentary was crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, Owens, because I always wanted to make that song, even though it's not a, a solo song per se. But Owens mm-hmm. always, always had that in my brain to make make that. Wow. So I, I got a question for you, Castro. Because mm-hmm. there's like. Heavy overtones in this whole record is like sort of black cinema for the past like 20, 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what 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 was the choice there in in choosing to like have that sort of be an overarching theme? Or was it um, was it a choice or is it just something that kind of happened? No, I think that was that was more so something just kind of happened. Okay. I mean, you know, we had the Spike Lee song. Yeah. Um Sugar Hill. You know, Sugar Hill stuff. So it's just Ooh. a lot of um, my black experience. I can root to certain films at certain mm-hmm. times, um, especially to encapsulate how I'm feeling. So, like, 
um, if I were to think about, even though the movie came, I saw the movie after, but if I would think about like my um, anticipation of college and being that age, it would be like dead presidents and like higher learning. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For an example. Um, um, and then like even something like Girl Six, that to me is like mm-hmm. my first job. You know, that oh, was the first job. Girl you six. know what I'm saying? And so Mo Better Blues, um, when I made Bleak Shadows, is because that's us. As entertainers, it's like the, the the eternal struggle that they have in that movie is um, Bleak is mad at uh, Shadow about. He's like, "What are you doing? You playing what the people want?" And yep. and then Bleak is like, "I'm not here to play what the people want. Bleak plays what the music want." And then Shadow's like, "We are here to play what the people want. Like that's where they paid the money. Like what do you mean? Yep. Like there's that there's that dichotomy of yeah. pleading your your crowd and and and." and and diving into your music and i love that that we all battle with that deal with that and that was so real because neither one was right neither one was wrong yeah and um so like i said so that's something i could tie into just being an experienced musician so definitely came afterwards i'm glad you asked that question just to think about it now all of the references we just mentioned cadence yeah um i'm very big i'm very cinematic so i'm hoping uh, what's that podcast that um oh uh i know what you're talking about real but- notes Real notes. Yeah, shout out to Real Notes, man. Yeah. Cinema Sai. Cinema, Cinema yep. Yeah, yeah he's, yeah, he's so a homie right there. Hopefully he hollers at the kid. I would love to go on that podcast and, and dig deep. So yeah, I, a lot of my stuff I can tie and weave into like cinematic moments and movies and stuff. The same way that people remember when they got like AT aliens and what, you know, I do that too. And so a lot of my black mm-hmm. experience, the film part is very important to me, even up to some present day, like something yeah. like uh, Moonlight and... Um, uh, Lovecraft Country, like I, I'm very big on black oh, yeah, Lovecraft and Country. black film. That was so, shit. It's a big part of my life. Yep. Wow. All right. Why, why don't we get to some of these great questions? The fucking inquirer minds on Twitter want to know. All right, but yeah, don't take it easy. Y'all still on the clock. Let me try yeah, to make the Twitter versus do y'all work for y'all. That is <laughs> fuck out of here. Um, no, because you know what it is too. They have questions that we we've kind of touched on already, which is dope. But then they have things I didn't think of. Here we go. You ready? I'm going to start from right. the bottom at the top of the list. Um, Mighty Healthy says, I have nothing to say other than Cujo taught me is the hardest shit on earth. Bow. Yeah. Cujo taught me Shouts that's another Mighty favorite of mine. Yeah. Shouts to Mighty Healthy. Makes a, a maker of hard beats on a weekly basis. Yeah. Um, hard beats. Remix. Pause. His beats are hard. 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 Pause. That man is not afraid of drums, man. Holy shit. Shouts to him. Um. Okay, Caltrops Press says, uh, talking about, you know, project anchored by history. This is a good one. Did you do a lot of research for the album or were you drawing on knowledge you've acquired organically over the years? I think I know the answer to this, but I would I may be wrong. Go for it. Um, it would be the latter. Um, a lot of that knowledge I have acquired over the years. It's okay. just part of my DNA at this point. But, I, you know, I grew up an academic. So at some point I was studying. Um, I definitely um, footnote and reference myself. I'm not just going to be out there. So if I don't know how to spell something, even though you might never see it written, I will look it up. If I need accuracy on a date, I will look it up. Mm-hmm. I have a song on my last record, um, Dark Skin Drum, which I actually did a lot of research yeah. for. I love um, all of the rep, all of, to all the um, nasty references in that one. Um, yes. That shit is hard as fuck. You know, um, so yes, I, I will sit down and do my research if I if need be. But a lot of times, some of the songs, Genesis and Catalyst, is stuff that I already um, have stored in my um, mainframe there. Nice, that's awesome. Um, go on. So next question is from Pete Bones seventy six. The go one too. A lot of beat switches on the project. I'm wondering if that was to convey some sort of theme, which I was wondering too, just because like. You had the Fanon joint, right? Black August. But then, like, Ray Nathan and Romello has got a beat change. You know what I mean? Right. Which is, like... And then, you know, obviously, Cujo no, told well, me... I mean, Ray Nathan and Romello, that was pretty much how Blueprint arranged that. Ah, so, okay, like, dope, dope. so that horn section at the end, to me, I imagined that, you know, Blueprint plays the horn. So if he was there live, he would be doing yeah, that. Yeah, I was live. wondering yeah. if he played that or not. I was like, I, I wouldn't me, put it probably, past Print. I wouldn't put it past him. Um, that's, that's a great question to ask him. Shout out to Print. Um, it, it was more so a, um, a great problem to have. I just had too many good beats. And Bet. so it was a matter of um, what do I cut? What do I keep? And it's funny, I cut a lot of good beats too. And mm. um, cats were just sending me so much heat. I didn't want to tell them to stop. But at the same time, 
I was overwhelmed with what I had. And um, like there's some great um, cryptic beats that I wanted to use on this. Mm. Oh, that's about. perfect. There's another great Dose 4G dub beat that I had like penned for this record. Um, interestingly enough, um, to speak on that and I'll get right back to it. The, the album started with two joints that um, got cut, but got placed somewhere else. So the album, the whole creation process started with like Motar, it's on Flachette. That's an elusive beat. Oh, shit. And um, Dreadlocks Falling. That's by Griff. So the Griff songs were all done in a pack. Like almost all three were done together, except the ones that I needed features on to finish. And so I did I did my parts all together, all those three. So pretty much the genesis of the album was like the Griff shit. So, you know, so once I'm starting to, um, you know, I had an issue because I was picking definites before I was finished. So I was like, oh, this got to make it. This got to make it. So then I'm running out of slots. I want right. the album to be too right. long. So I had a point where I was like, yo, some of these beats got to stick. How am I going to get that together? Mm -hmm. And so when it came to Black August, the beats were ill, but I, I couldn't write to them. So I didn't come up with uh -huh. any verses at one point. I did come up with hooks. So if you notice, all the songs have hooks. I can't put all those hooks first. So I said, all right, I got hooks. And I don't want to make individual songs to each of that because that would make too many. And I knew I would have to cut something. Right. Let me put them together and use the hooks and then just do one verse. Um, on Bleak Shadow, the nature of the song, the two di the dichotomy, two part, you know, two sides of a coin. It just yeah. it required a beat switch. And then the other ones are just like um, the choices the producers made in post. So I don't think there was an overt theme to show any like two sidedness right. or double consciousness or whatever. I just felt like a lot of the beats. Um, deserve to be on the project so i just had to find a way F fuck it and here, here's a good question these these two questions tie in beautifully they're back to back so this is from jason at unknown jones where he says and we've talked a lot about bleak shadows so i want to just say the beginning of what he says is mo better blues a top movie for you mm -hmm. um i don't know if he yes. means top spike or just top all time well, movie, I'm not Spike sure. movies, I do keep in their capsule. Like these are Spike movies. I don't really mm -hmm. even because sometimes they'll just blow other movies away for for that reason alone. Right. Um. But it is one of my top Spike movies. It has um Robin Harris in it. Whew. You know things of that nature. Giancarlo does a little quick piece. Um, he does. Yeah. Um. Ruben Blades is in it. Ruben Blades. <laughs> you talk you know about him saying? in the song. I love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah the so it's, it's, what's what's let me ask you this. What what is after do the right thing? What's like top five oh, spike? That, all right, so let's do the right thing. Obviously, it's X. X. Okay. Um, school days is up there. I like Ooh. coming of age movies that showed me college that I should have watched before I went to college, and so uh, those always like jump up there. So like Menace and stuff. When you're that age and you're having that transition, mm. Menace specifically more than it, Boys in the Hood too. But like if you know like that going to college, what do I do with my life? Those jump right. up there. Yeah. Okay. Um. What else? Uh, uh, Inside Man, even though that's not like Spike, that's I love Spike that Jason. Right? That's, no, that's Spike, bro. That's that's that, Spike just making like some spike. shit anybody I mean, can just check it. in on. He didn't write it, but yeah. um, uh, and then uh, Crooklyn. Cro yeah, I was waiting for you to say Crooklyn. Crooklyn's, Crooklyn's Crooklyn. my favorite Spike Lee movie. Yeah. People love. I haven't seen it in Crooklyn so long, but it's so great. Good. It's so good. I gotta it's, watch it again. I haven't watched it in probably fifteen like, years. If you want to talk about comparing period pieces of movies done in the seventies, Brooklyn is up there. Like, yo, clothing. I didn't know about the whole like uh, inhaling the the glue shit yeah, until yeah, I saw Huffers. that. I didn't know yeah. what that yeah. was. Yeah, people still do that shit. Yeah. Bro, I still have the my my Crooklyn Dodgers twelve inch the single. Yeah, that's and then the Return of the Crooklyn Dodgers both the of the second songs. one. Well, so then that's from Clockers, and you're Clockers exactly. Exactly. And, and there was a, that was deliberate. Guy. And then Clockers. Clockers wow. The Check this one. out. You ready for this? Ready for this? Yeah. Here's Spike's run. Ready? From 88 to 95. School watch, days. watch you. Watch, watch, it. My, watch this. Watch no, no, this watch this. 88 is school days, right? 89, do the right thing. Probably the best fucking American movie. She's got to have it. That was yeah. exactly. Well, it's 80. Uh, to me, it's more of like a student movie. It's not like, but it's, but it's so, it's so avant garde. It worked when all yeah. the little small things. It is, but it, to it, me, it, it's it, like it, he's still trying to figure things. He's still and it's no, off it, the TV show, which was really good. Yeah, it, it, but I'm I saying like the TV um, show. she's got to. I mean, I mean, like the second season, she's got to have it works because it's just as strong as any Woody Allen thing, and it survives. No, it's it's really theaters. good. It's 
It's yeah, really good. So. I just think like everything after it, it was like him getting. And it his also footing shows that he didn't have the budget, and he didn't have the budget True. to do the right thing. So and, I'm you, just, and like you always said like, too about she's got to have. It was the first time like from a woman's point of view of like yes, I'm playing big, these motherfuckers n- out. It was never dope. a role like that, right? But, Especially for a black no. woman in the fucking nope. '80s. All right, so then, so '86, she's got to have it. '88, School Days. '89, Do the Right Thing. '90, Mo Better Blues. '91, mm. Jungle Fever. Wow. Yep. <laughs> 92 Malcolm X <laughs> 94 Crooklyn 95 clockers all right boom that's if he died right then he's like one of the most important American directors of all time you know what I mean just like just for those yeah. 10 years and then you still have bamboozled to come like, bamboozled that's one of, oh god four little girls bamboozled. Uh yeah, twenty fifth hour. That's one of my top. I love summer Sam. I love summer Sam. Summer Sam. I gotta go back to watch. I haven't seen that in a long time. I watched that the other day. And then uh, then he had like you know a dry run like Red Hook Summer, Old Boy, Sweet Blood of Jesus, Chirac. Then like Black Klansman was pretty good. Yeah, Black Klansman. Five Bloods good. is fucking a mess. But she also Delroy. Wait, Delroy should have um, got every award. Delroy was, the, was it Red Hook Summer? Is that what it's called? It's awful. I never saw it. It's god it awful. awful. Oh, it's man. really bad. It's really like a bad. It, it had dude from the wire in it. Yeah, it's so bad. It plays, so uh, bad. Yeah, it plays fucking uh, Lester, Lester yeah. Freeman. So that's um, a bad movie. Okay, so speaking of Spike, here we go. Uh, little little Uzi Vert Conigat tweets Van Zant said, um, "How intentional was it to parallel the opening credits of a movie into an opening scene with a long single shot? Maybe a patented Spike Lee dolly shot." With an instrumental and then a song where your voice doesn't come into like halfway th- through. So you talked about that, but like, did you think, I mean, me and you've talked about that for years, like trying to do a spike dolly shot in a video. Yeah. Did you and parallel I, that at all with, with the opening of the album? One, I, just, did, I, did a, I did. We did a Spike Lee dolly shot in Errol Barnes. Mm, Edwards. You did. You did. I'm wild. Me and, um, me and Prim were pretty focused on getting right. So we had our own version of it. It's pretty dope how we pulled it off. Um, I still do an official dolly shot in a video, like the whole video. That that that. Can y'all hear me? Everything good? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah you're good. Okay. Um, that that shot is so important to me in the way he tells his stories and the way he uses it. Same way that Hitchcock's push in zoom is important. I think Spike Lee's dolly shot, and I always thought it was interesting just because a director can't patent a shot so mm-hmm. how do everybody just let him use it and then you if you get to know film everybody uses it you know what i'm saying they just have yeah. different ways of doing it they just have their own um, style to it right. right so the way people are interpreting the beginning is just great for me i would i'd love to i would love that to be original idea of me um you know wanting to be it but it, it is a proper intro a lead in um somebody i think even compared it to um dead president well somebody compared it to a movie intro so i'm comparing it to dead president in, intro with the burning dollar and how long that took the you know, the Hughes brothers joint yeah president yeah. yep and that long intro and you were just kind of waiting and waiting sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so I think it was just a, it, was, it was a great gamble on my part and like I said I just felt like I was rapping so much I I should give a I should give a different runway before we launch mm. yeah. uh okay so we we talked about lift earlier yeah uh, so um chefs Chef Ting's knife at Meng underscore Nar said, "How did working with Lyft come about? One of the top tracks, in my opinion." This that's, that's the brother Griff. Yup. Um, Griff, Griff, and Lyft go way back. Oh um, yes, they do. From the um, from the Boston and surrounding areas, they used to do sports podcasts together. Shouts to Yo Football podcasting. Radio. I was a guest. That's so funny. I I can't believe that I was a guest on that as well. And hey, look at that, Alaska. Years later, Before- I was doing an album with Griff. Before you know, before that podcasting was even a thing, they were they were getting that cracking, mm-hmm. and so um, it was actually Griff's idea. He's like, "Yo, you want to get Lift on a record?" Like I said, Ooh. the record kind of started with me doing that Griff pack. So when we were working on that song, he brought up the idea of Lift, and I said, "Hell yeah!" So like you know, ask him, you know, what we have to do to get that to happen, and he was gracious enough to do it. Mm. And I said this on um uh on Free Music Empire, on, on um, Attention Undivided, I think was the name of the second. Yep. Um, he had a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? And I, I felt fortunate enough that he was still able to complete the verse for me because um, he did have a lot going on personally. Yep. 
um, at the time, which where he could have just been like, you know, I can't really do it right now. And I would have been totally okay with that because I understood. But he still found the time to crack that out and he just gave such a great verse. Um, went perfect with the song. And then, and then my head was like, all right, I got to get Woods on this song. You know, it just all made sense to me once all the pieces fell. Yeah. That's crazy. The, um, yeah, shouts to Lip, man. Um, oh, there's a good one from, again, from Tweets of Van Sant. Who is Locust? That name is brand new to me. And holy shit, their beats are amazing. Free Huey Fitted's is a jam. Yeah, Locust is um, literally the, the secret weapon. Cat I met online. I mean, Mr. Malone, and he goes by Locust and Small Pro is I'm familiar with him too. They, 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 they're like friends production wise. Nice. Mm. He's just an ill beat maker. Um, the difference is with him is he'll he'll send a pack, but he works one beat at a time. So if he's sending you stuff, he'll send you one thing at a time, maybe two things at a time. He's not like hoarding and have like 40 packs and send you, right. you know, um, send you like bonds of 10. So he can really, what's good about Locus is you can really hone in. You can give him something. And since he's working on one beat at a time, he can really uh, execute what you're asking. And yeah. So I don't really give him too much direction. He just sends me a lot of fire. Like, you know, yes, he does. Really, really solid cat. A lot of That's bottom it. to his shit. And so I told him, I was like, yo, you about, you about to be my secret weapon. Watch. People ain't even going to know how this stuff going to hit him. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put it out. So, you know, um, he got a lot of placements. He has... Um, some other placements with us and things of that nature yep. um, coming right down the pipe. Up. Yeah, so like, you know, Locus is the man. He's, just, Bet. he's the man. Uh, Griff wants to know, how did you settle on the order of verses on Killmonger? Um, well, I got Woods verse last and I finished first because um, of the way I created the song. But the way everything is, especially that refrain, um, I just felt like your woods should kick it off. Ah. And then um, and then I'll be like, OK, so woods is like right on in terms of my topic, in terms of like the cop dichotomy and the celluloid cop. And then so I'm in the middle because I'm still kind of talking about that, but bleeding into some real life stuff here and there. And mm. then Liff is like, um, you know, the sniper bullet. The end. So it all makes sense. And then um, Griff arranged the beat in the way with. Oh shit! And build up all the tension, and it worked out. Um, a couple more questions. Uh, Chumzilla wants to know how many shablows were left on the cutting room floor in the recording of this great opus. This is really an amazing record. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mister Chum. Um, I, I mean, I think I was working on this record outside of call out culture, so I don't think I was like employing the shablows at that point. Definitely not. <laughs> um, but the um, shablows might make appearances on future albums. Shablow. Uh said so, all right, Def C wants to know was the extended metaphor of Black Panther Party as superheroes an intentional choice before you started writing the album, or was it a motif that emerged as you were writing and recording music for it? Well, the Black Panther Party umbrella, that's where we, we kicked it off at yep. the tribute to um little Bobby. And we mentioned that earlier in the episode. Right. The superhero-ish part is like Ron Pullman's genius. Pretty much is how that came about. And then right. the way that weaves into the album is that's just part of my writing style. So, Shabla. all right. Last question from Dano, Free Music Empire, uh, Keyboard Colossus. What was the hardest song to write? Oh, shoot. Um, two songs, I guess. The Owens, because I really wanted to write it like I was running and, um, running for my life Mm. so i had to perform in a certain way so in order for me to perform something a certain way i kind of got to write it that way first um and then um weapon 13x because i I knew um i was going to get breeze on that and um when you get breeze on a on a project on a track you just got to focus on what you're doing don't even think about what he's doing he's a wizard with this shit so like don't concern yourself with what's going on in the other <laughs> lane. Make sure you're saying you're within your lines. Keep your eyes on the road. And keep your foot on the gas. Prepare for ownage yeah. on the other end of that shit. Uh, all right, dope. So thanks, everybody, for their questions. We're going to take another Manscaped break. 
And we'll be back live from the Liar Notes. Curly Castro, Little Robert Hutton, out now on Backwoods Studios. Blah. Blah. CD pre-orders up at Backwoods. Don't forget. CD pre-orders available, as is the crop fertilizer revitalizer of Manscaped. <laughs> it's all over Zilla's son's toothbrush. It's all uh, over my son's <laughs> toothbrush. Castro, are you going to do t-shirts for this? Um, No, but I will be. Um, my fuck puffs shirts will be going live soon. Okay. So, yeah, buddy. Hey, friends. Cool. It's me, your friendly neighborhood podcast host, in Alaska, and I'm here to tell you about an exciting new project that I just released with my friend Jason Griff. You might know Jason Griff from his many appearances on the Call Out Culture podcast, as well as his groundbreaking work with the Griff Scorsese Midnight Express album. Also, his solo project. Fireside Chats. You need a sweater and a bearskin rug for that one, fellas. Anyway, we just dropped a new record called Human Zoo. And Human Zoo examines the cages that we put around society and the self-imposed cages we put around ourselves. It features exciting tracks like Reboot featuring Fat Boy Sharif and Animal Farm featuring Love Ulysses. We also have additional vocals from the likes of Alex Ludovico. Not Ludovico, Ludovico with a C. See what I'm saying there, people? And Prem Rock. And then the All Hook All the Time track featuring vocal stylings from Curly Castro, Zilla Rocca. Death C, Rob Sonic, Breezley Bruin, and Open Mike Eagle. If you like the rap music, folks, you're gonna want to get this record. It's a must-have for every true aficionado, and you could get it at insubordinaterecords.com. Alaska, out. Bing bang, ba boom. Call Out Culture Podcast. Um, shouts to everybody on Patreon, YouTube, all that shit. Yo, shouts to uh, Super Duty Tough Work. They were shouting your boys out on that episode about um, having full-time jobs and being artists and shit. So that was really cool of those dudes to to rep for us. Um, so cool. Thanks, guys. All right. So last guy's got some questions. So s- some of them may have been touched upon, but... Um... But you weren't listening. You were just no, on no. Path. I was listening, but it was like it was kind of like lightly touched upon it, like skirted around the edges, um, sure. like from the listener questions. But um, one of the things I noticed is like when listening, and this is something I noticed, like I'm, I'm like my f- fourth or fifth listen, um, is sort of the layers in the ideas and the concepts, mm. right? So mm-hmm. like um, on the the Killmonger was right track, mm-hmm. right? So. You have the you have the hook um a fight a fight a panther and a white if the panther uh if the panther don't win then we all jump in like you know that sort of like mm-hmm. play on that old sort of like schoolyard chant right right it's a pat apache apache no the mc apache oh yep. yeah fight fight a nigga and a white the nigga don't win then we all jump in yeah but that was like some old schoolyard shit wasn't it well he was he sung it that way but I don't think yeah. that's anything that I grew up remembering. I don't remember hearing that shit. <laughs> I've seen it in movies. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, so like so there's that idea, and it's like the that you know, dealing with like the cops and the Panthers is like that layer on it. Right. Um, but then there's like Killmonger was right, and you know, you're right. sort of dealing with the Panthers in the movie Black Panther, and Killmonger was like against Black Panther, but he was also sort of like tied to the you know, the so idea here's, that you're um, expressing is more like in line with his point of view. Well, here's an interesting thing. Again, y'all know I'm big on titles. Yeah. So I felt like you'll get it once you start working through your mind what Killmonger was right about. Yeah. And then the song will make sense. And the interesting thing about the hook, the word um, fight, fight a panther in a white is at first I wrote it as fight, fight, a nigga in a white. And that's how I performed it when I did the hook before I sent it to Lip. And I was actually trying to, um, that's how the hook is in the original Apache song. And it was also something Woods had done on, uh, um, 
Smalls on the album. Sh- on Smalls album. Mm-hmm. And they cut they they cut it. And so I was gonna do it. And Lyft um talked to me personally. He was like, he doesn't really want to be on a song with the um with the N-word on it. And hmm. I was in it, and that took me back just in the sense that it's my song. I know why I did the hook, you know. So I'm, you know how you are when people talk to you about things and they're working with you, your pride starts getting in the way. Yeah. And you start, then I started thinking, well, you know, I, I really want to be gracious. He's a guest on my song. I don't mind changing it around, but I did. I ain't gonna hold you. So I kind of did, but then I was like, wait a minute. This will give me a way to, to throw an alternate thread up into the overarching umbrella of the album, as well as expressing my love for that hook and the interpo- interpolation of it, as well as expressing the underlying meaning of the track. So by changing that word actually makes the track fall into what you're talking about. Yeah. Alaska, it made it more layered and actually was um, the, the better poetic choice. Yeah, it definitely was. So, yeah. So salute to Liv for that. Uh, pull, making me, pulling me back from the edge on that. So that's how <laughs> that kind of came about. So, yeah, I always wanted to tell that part. That's what's up. Um, and then, so I just want to know about like the production, right? You have like such a vast array of producers. Mm-hmm. How do you get, I mean, maybe it's just the way you approach them about it, but like, how do you get such a cohesive sound out of that many different people's like styles and approaches coming together? Well, I gave them the byline. Everybody kind of knew the byline of mm-hmm. um, Little Bobby with Afrofuturist weaponry against Hoover. Right. Yeah. But I also gave them a wide berth. So like, most of the people, except for Quelle, Quelle's the only one that gave me one beat that I use. Everybody else gave me multiple beats okay. to pick from. Um, and so I think it was more my selection because I, I can't sit there and say that I told them to hit a sound and they all hit it and I picked those. Yeah, It, it, it was more so what the songs were turning into and how I felt they fit. Like okay. the, um, the, the presence of the horns, I didn't even realize it was that much horns on the record until I put the record together. Yeah, there's a lot of um, horns on there. Yeah, there's a lot of horns. Like I call them like um, haunted Harlem horns. Like, stuff, you, stuff you would hear in midnight and you walking through Harlem. Like yeah. that type of horns through an open window and shit like that. Um, and so it was, it was pretty much based on my selection because yeah, there's a lot of production on it. And um, something else I did was I took a page out of um, DJ Muggs and he did uh, one of his recent Soul Assassins, I think like Damn La Muerte, all of his vocal features is two appearances. So there's like two Ghostface verses on okay. different songs. Uh, go see it on that Not show? Ghostface. Okay, excuse me. Two Doom verses Doom, on different yeah, songs. Yeah. Two Freddie Gibbs verses on different songs. Two yep. Cool G Rap. Right? He's on there. I think Ito's yeah. on that joint. Yeah, G Rap. G Rap. That so, joint's G Rap and Doom. But what it happened was it created this um, through line and this cohesiveness in the project, even though all the beats were different because having the different voices pop up twice. Yeah. So a lot of the beats, um, most of them have two or more contributions. Most of them have two. Locus has three and Quellicus has one. Okay. So Bet. if you and, and I didn't arrange it like that. I don't think it works like a mirror where it's like you hear one of their beats in the top half and you hear another beat in the second half. But I felt like hearing multiple occasions of each producer's style would start making you breed some familiarity by you by the time you got to the to the end. Yeah. Oof. Oh, you know, you know who's on that that uh, mugs album twice? Raekwon's on it twice. Mahami's yeah. on it twice. Oh. Yeah. See. So yeah. So and Mayhem. Just like, Mayhem Lorenzo on choice too. It's it almost crazy. makes you, it, it, you. You have no. You know. Sometimes you have no choice but to think it's cohesive because yeah. you're you're hearing um, two forays of these cats. Nice. And it, and it fit like it, the vision that you had of the record before you started it. Did this like fit into that like sort of sonic vision that you had of it? Like, no. Do you feel like you met it or no? no? No. No. When I first started the record, the idea was to lean more into the Afrofuturism as sound. Okay. So mm. not to say it would have been a bunch of bleeps and bloops, but to, for instance, it would have been a little bit more where Dose, G, um, Dose 4G dub, dub went with it. Okay. So if you listen to his two contributions, that's kind of where I was um trying to get as a sound through the whole thing. Like, the f- presence of machinery and technology on each beat. Okay. I'd actually gotten with Jeff Markey to try to accomplish that. But oh, as I was getting, shout out to Markey, as I was getting other contributions, 
that's when the horn started coming into play. And then that's when also the melancholy, because I know there's also a melancholy. Yeah, it's a lot of melancholy right there. It. Yeah. Um, that's when it came into play with different selections. And like, I wasn't going to leave Messiah Music off the record. So his joints weren't necessarily Ooh. like to that point, but they were ill ass loops. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of organic to it. And the messages come out after the crafting. Wow. And yeah, I mean, I didn't. Um, Laska, just to be honest with you, this, this album was like an ocean to me. It was like 40 feet below and 40 feet above. So I didn't really know, like, because people like the beats, I was totally just immersed in it. I couldn't see it to see yeah. if even they knew. I just knew, all right, these joints are going to be on here. These Griff joints are going to be on here. And I was also in a space of um, not alienating fans. I was like, I didn't give a fuck. Like, this is my not give a fuck record. Like, yeah. I'm going to put this shit on there. I'm going to make it fit. This is my square peg in a, in a round hole i'm gonna stuff it in there with a hammer if i had to because i Make wanted this shit no to be on. yeah nice well that um here's what i want to know so i i know all your albums man mm-hmm. and and this one is like when, when we were working on tosh and then you know fidel and stuff i feel like i love those records you know what i mean I, I love I love fucking Blue Edwards. I love all this shit. And I think what's what's interesting about this album is like it feels like um the, the way people look at Kanye's like dark fantasy, right? Where everyone's like, that's a fucking 10 and pitchfork and all this shit. Mm-hmm. To me, like graduation is always like the pinnacle because graduation is like you see the buildup and all the things he's acquiring. And then when he hits graduation, he's able to use the soul shit, the lush orchestra shit. Yeah, the sum of all his powers. And then he's tying he's into it. like the Southern shit as that's cracking too, right? Mm-hmm. And so Dark Fantasy after that, you know, to me, it's just like a little, it's like very long and ridiculous in certain parts. There's amazing songs. But I say that to say like, if I look at all your shit from Fat Man, Little Boy with fucking DJ Ambush and then Fidel and then Tosh and even Winston's appeal and you know Blue Edwards like I feel like I see and hear all of the things from them like totally blown up on this shit right so Mm -hmm. it's kind of like you know like we're saying about like even Spike Lee like going from you know whatever the fuck his budget was on she's got to have it to fucking X you know what I mean? Like right. it's the same dude with the same ideas with his fingerprints all over the piece, but it's like it's different making something for a hundred thousand dollars versus you know fifteen million, whatever the fuck. X yeah, goes. I mean, yeah. there's like a through line you could tie a through line from F um stands for Hampton to restoring G build the whole project. Restoring the, or even like yeah. the letter M on yeah. fucking Fidel, where you're talking about like like Medgar Evans. You know what I mean? Like. I'm saying like you, you you've had a lot of these ideas and concepts on different records, right? Mm-hmm. But they would be like sparse pieces, you know what I mean? Whereas this one, it's like you're only gonna get the the militant side, the black leader side, the Afrofuturism, like you were saying, and you're only getting people that can fuck with that that could tap into that with you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Versus, I think other records you had other ideas too and other collaborators that all fit the bill. Whereas with this one, it's like, it's the same way we were talking about Spike. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be certain actors that are in a lot of Spike movies, but some movies they're not in. You know what I mean? Like, right. yeah, like Delroy is in Crooklyn and he's not around for fucking 20 years, but now he's in the five hoods and he's the five bloods and he's amazing. You know what I mean? Like that's the right spot for him to be in versus like Bill Nunn, who's in a lot of his shit or what, what's the homeboy, um, the dude from um, he got game. You know, the, the pussy, they throw the pussy at you. What's that dude's oh, name? Oh, that's um, Michael Grenville Smith. He's in, you know, he's in fucking Do the Right Thing. You know what I mean? Like, that dude's probably, like, in seven Spike movies. He's in, um, what's it called? What's what's it? Who's he playing in School Days? Um, in School Days? He's yeah. not in School Days. He's in Get on the Bus. He's on Get on the Bus. Okay. So he's, like, in a lot of different ones. Oh, so I feel he, like he could be in School Days. He might be one of the pledges with his, he's, yeah, he's with one his, of the with pledges. his head shed, though. Yes. He might be one of the pledges. He's one yeah. of the pledges, right? So you can kind of throw that guy in a lot of places. So I think with this record, it's like you can put, you know, me and Prem and Alaska on a bunch of different shit, right? You can put Woods on a lot of different shit, right? But, like, 
having all the Chicago cats together on one song and then, you know, I mean, like sketch on two joints or like getting one piece from Quelly, but three joints from Locust and Griff. Like, I feel like when you when you made this happen, I don't know if that was something you plotted out, but like, you know, oh, okay, here's my standby guys. Here's some new guys, whatever. But it feels like you hit in this record and now more people were paying attention than ever, obviously through shrapnel and then our show and backwoods and all that shit. But I really feel like whether you knew it or not, like you met the moment, you know what I mean? Like this, this shit is from like, again, from the artwork to the packaging, to the song titles to having breeze and lift, like all time dudes that I know how much they meant to you your whole life to having them on this shit. You know what I mean? Like, blueprint having two beats like this shit is really uh fucking being meeting somewhere in the winter circle like you know, like getting out the nascar with the fucking with the milk you know what I mean? just just guzzling it and yeah. so i i just want to say as as a person you know we've been friends a long time but like watching you make a lot of records or performing a lot of these records like this shit is that's what i said i'm more i'm more compared to graduation where to me it's like you see everything lining up piece by piece and then when it hits you're like i knew he could do that you know what I mean? <laughs> like mm-hmm. but i didn't know you could do that because i didn't know about this record until i was asked to be on like free huey fittits you know what i mean like i didn't know what the fuck was going on with this record until it was right. towards the end so no. i just want to know like did did you have a sense of that with your history of things or was it just like I'm just banging um, out records and trying to find places for people and trying to get a, a, a chart of all these hot ass beats. Well, um, first, thank you. Thank you for that sentiment. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that, brother. Um, I knew it could be a bigger record because I felt like I was dealing with more um more of my honest stances. Like my girl says it. Um, she she even admits she's like, I'm I'm surprised a lot of white people like it, because it's mm. just this is your blackest record ever. And it was just something I felt like it was time for me to talk about. So um, I don't know about the moment. I'm still a little bashful about that. But I remember like when I made Tosh, it was my time to make that record, to show right. my heritage right. and to, to honor my family and things of that nature. And so when it came to this one, I knew, like I said, I had the idea for Little Robert Hutton in the back of my head. I didn't know it would turn into this. I didn't know the byline when I had the title. Um, but I'm glad to see what it turned into. So um, um, was it planned and plotted? No, I just knew I, I wanted to drop this honest black record. And I hope I, I hope I met, you know, met the mark. I hope I met the challenge. That's that was just my bet. It was just a hope. I didn't really have it scanned out. Nice. You know, I'm, I'm an old man. I still got more shit to do. So true. You know, I, 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 I want to make even better records than this. Um, but definitely you know this is the standard i can't go below this so i'm also by putting something like this out i'm challenging myself because now that i'm raising my bar i'm making it even harder for myself Mm -hmm. moving forward and i I have a concept for your next album right i think the next album it should be an hour and 45 minutes number one oh god (laughs) and no just as a creative hear me out hour and 45 minutes okay seven verses of the same no thank you no but i'm saying like as a creator like sometimes when you exhaust yourself you know and you look around it's weird because you you've made a hundred or more songs but you look like how am i going to do this again i can't do this again i have no more ideas i just gave all my good ideas to this record what the hell am i going to talk about next album station wagons and that's where you look to somebody like aesop rock who's made Mm. the monday and excitable so right. like he can get away with a, a song about a bug, a song about a frog, and a song about a stove. Head back, and, and that's <laughs> that's three out of the that's three that's three need nine more. You right. know what I mean? He just and he just made a twenty two track record. So Whew. like, um, yeah, I, I definitely um wanted to meet this mark and also therefore challenging myself by raising my own bar. Bang! Well, I don't I don't have much else to say to that shit. I, I just. Yeah, sorry. I mean, it's not. Well, let, let me ask you this. Like let it. me ask you this then, real quick, Alaska. Why? Yeah. Why do you law this record so heavily? Yeah, yeah. Let's I'm curious. That. It's just one of those. Because you hate everything. Like, you hate everything. No, no, so I hate on. a lot of shit. Um, <laughs> but I got the same feeling I got when I first heard like Canucks. 
Wow. You know, like when I heard first heard Illmatic, like when, you know, that like it's one of those records, like the first time you hear it, you're like, you remember it. You're like, holy shit. Mm. Like it changed the way you look at things. <sighs> and like, that's what this album did. I was like, I mean, I was getting ready to drop my fucking album and then I listened to this thing and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I just gotta throw the whole record out now. Stop it. You know, Stop. but it, it's that's like to me, like that's a high compliment. Mm-hmm. Like when you know there's somebody that's made something that's so impressive that you're like shit back to the drawing board. Shit, I'm I'm on a label arm and him. So imagine that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yet Throw you still got the best away. album of the year. Salute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just it really was like I was able to detach myself from being your friend when I was listening to it and just being like in awe of the art. Nice. Yeah. So, so which is difficult to do. It's hard for us to be objective with each other. It's just yeah, it's unnatural. So, you know, yeah. We try to be objective. But no, gentlemen, I appreciate that. Truly. Like, I mean, look, like I even told you, like, you know, um, there's a million reasons I make records, but top two reasons are to impress my friends. Yeah. It's it's you know, and it's because I have such an ill peer group. Yeah. If I didn't have such an ill peer group, then I don't know. If you know what I'm saying? It would be worth sharpening the steel. And that's just the truth. And that's where I wanted to place myself with yeah. um, excellent peers and, and comrades and stuff. So when I, when I do cut my sword, um, you know, when I, I let people rock with it, they're going to be honest and they're going to be like, you know, all right, this is dope or it's not. It's funny, um, that review we talked about, the guy mentions how I pronounce sword. He said sword. I pronounced it like the sword, like the Wu-Tang sword. thing. And I do. Ever since Wu-Tang did it, I do pronounce yeah. it that way. So I thought that was a good catch. Um, steel shop and steel shopping your sports. Yeah, so I, I ain't gonna hold y'all. You know, I just really wanted to. You know, I've been saying this a lot, but it's it's true. I wanted to hold on my part of the bargain. You know, what I'm saying I, I, mm. I wanted to um to do my duty and um go up there and give a, a competent at bat and put some you know wood on the leather, mm-hmm. as they say. You said like a game <laughs> season saving World Series. Grand Slam yeah, down I mean, by you like know, the, three, the, like the, the ninth, bottom of the did, ninth, game seven. The Yankees did make the, uh, we did have a walk-off 1-0 win to make it to the wild card one-game playoff. So, you know, yeah. there's something to that. Um, Aaron Judge had an uh, RBI single. Yeah. And wow. homeboys beat the slide. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just it was just my turn, man. It's my turn. And so I take that pretty seriously. And so um, uh, to be a wrecking crew, I didn't want my wrecking crew uh, membership revoked. <laughs> so I had to come with a heat rock. Well, I mean, shit. You did it. You did it. Yes, son of a bitch. So Mickey loves you. Can we talk about one thing real quick? Yes, cool. sir. Why not? It's our fucking show. Yeah. Um. Fucking. So, Cujo taught me. How does that happen? Yeah. How does that well, like? How does that really? It's <laughs> happen. Like how do how do you get that beat? And you're like, this is what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> like I would have listened to that and been like, all right, let's pull this beat change out of well, here and that, like keep it funny else. because the question about what was the hardest to write that could have fit in there if I didn't have like a plan of attack. So yeah. what I did was first of all, the song is broken up. It's like four pieces. Nobody will know that because they only think it's two verses, but it's like four pieces. And each piece I went and found a reggae flow that I really liked okay. or I admired or that I memorized. And I would start each piece of that four with that reggae flow. With and the reggae flow yeah. There's like a there's like a whole section in there about old man Logan that nobody even can decipher. So like it's just a funny <laughs> oh it's a God. funny song. It's like a whole good eight ton bars about yeah. the comic book old man Logan. That's all it's about and about That's the, amazing. Whew, and about the uh, the last Hulk and Hank Pym skeleton. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. Y'all, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, so I'm 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 writing a joint. So I have that in mind those four pieces right and then my mm-hmm. ode to certain reggae flows and stuff and you're always going to catch that on reggae on records by mine that's how i grew up mm-hmm. that's what i grew up yeah. on i'm west End into the core you know so um you'll get that splash all the time and then the that you know that piece came out i ain't gonna say exactly where it is i don't want to get banged for it but it just made sense to put it in there and i was like you know what i'm just gonna use it like a with a movie sample if, you know, mm. if, if, I, if I took a line from The Godfather, it would be about that long. You put the little sound effects at the end, and boom, it'd be right there in the middle of the song. And so I felt like that's the essence of a sound clash, and I'm kind of battling myself on the song. Yeah. So I felt like, yo, I'm gonna stick that piece in there, two of my idols and shit, and you know, 
hopefully it works. And I remember being like, oh, should I put it in there? Because one, I didn't want to get banged for it. Two, does it work? Will people be thrown off? And then me and Griff went back. Well, actually, no, that's not the truth. Griff definitely crafted the beat. And I'm grateful for that. But this is me, our uh, live concoction. Mm -hmm. In terms of going back and forth for how to, how to intro that section, what to do with the drums, how to bring me back and stuff like that. And I, at first it was like, should that be at the beginning? And I was like, you know, we gonna put that shit smack in the middle, bomb, just oh. like a clash, just like a DJ was just killing a record and starting <laughs> up something out real quick. And then when the crowd get hyped, boom, go back to something else and shit yeah. like that. And they don't even know what to do with themselves. So that's that. And then um, the title, Cujo told me, that's who told me I'll do that, Cujo okay. Goody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Splashing them, on the scene. But them good is when of Cujo Bob references in there too. When Cujo would come on the song, you would know it. You knew whether it was third verse, fourth verse. Yeah. He would make his entrance known, and that's what I felt like I wanted that song to be like. Mm. You know. Fuck yeah! Yeah. No, oh, yeah. That's it, man. Well, that's all I got. What's your favorite line, Z? Oh shit! Um, I just said I just said it to Castro. What the fuck? What did I say to you today about that shit? You just said what? what oh, about asking? um the X Men Apocalypse line. Oh, so um. Omega, Omega, uh, Omega wrecked the mutant, but but who, but which God do you trust? So Omega yep. wrecked the mutant, but which God do you trust? But this um, this version of X Apocalypse, Apocalypse uh, works well. for us. Works yeah. for us. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's some much. Jonathan Hickman, House yeah, of X, Dawn of X, for Mike, X for Mike yeah. Eagle and all them cast. They know that shit. Yeah, that's what that the is. The FC knows that shit. I think Blood Money Perez, he knows that shit. Put everybody putting on to the Hickman X-Men run. That's... That's that's Which is coming to an end soon. So well, you know, it's over. Salute to that. Yeah. But yeah. yes. So yeah, that's what that line is. Yep. Or, Last. Uh mine is like double Dutch, uh like Sherman Hems, amen. Oh, uh <laughs> double Dutch that passed on my Sherman Hem, amen. Yeah. Uh how do I start that? Yeah. So um uh that's just me just talking fly and shit like that. Yeah. So I always love that part. And amen when he walks in and he yeah. he, he, yeah, he, yeah. he does the double dutch and boom. And I personally always wanted to when I kind of half learned. I used to work at a summer camp and I kind of almost got good at it, like good yeah. at just catching maintaining because I always thought that was an ill skill. I still watch a lot of double dutch competitions. They them girls is crazy. Yeah, Guys do, but they, they're really crazy, the coordination that they line. do. Um, but yeah, that's what that was. It was that just line like took me. me back to like when I used to like have to stay home on Saturday night with my younger brother while my parents were out. And now you would Amen. watch Amen. You watch Amen, Amen and it was shit. like, oh, like just two, two, a meeting. Thanks for watching Amen 227 Amen. Golden Girls, dog. Yep. Yeah, that was my bang, bang. shit. One, two, three. Yep, they were yep. right there, right behind each other. Yep. So like, yeah, that line is me just stepping in, flexing and being fly. Like I'm, you know, I'm going to step to Sherman Hemsley out, double dutch him and That's step dope. off and keep walking. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. awesome. Well, I think right. that's it, man. We yeah. had some fucking great questions from the fans. Yeah, Eloise. thank y'all. That, that was Chasse dope. Eloise. Um, All right, I forgot you made a cameo. She, yes, yeah, she she did. But yeah. no, thank you to the fans and stuff. I, um, really, I sincerely, I just want to say thank you like to the people rocking with the record. Um, everything is a surprise to me. I don't take any of this for granted. So um, y'all could ask my friends. I was very nervous. And for months. Months, so months worried months. Uh, would this would this hit would people get it um i'll even admit to the people like um there's not a lot of blade play on this like shrapnel so once shrapnel got popular and that is a lot about writing and cutting heads and you know really ill just writing that's what shrapnel is blade work and so this record is not that and so i was wondering if people would be able to take both sides of me like me dumbing it down a little bit and being more um, direct and impactful with my words and my and my line places, my, my line placements, as opposed to just trying to chop everybody's head off at every half bar. Um, yeah, but and that's, that's that's you know that's not all that shrapnel is, but shrapnel definitely has a a, um, a high end uh, sword forgery to it, and yeah. so I was just hoping that people would swords. take this as well. You know, sharp and so swords. I, again, I just. So I just want to say thank y'all for riding with me. With, you know, keep riding with me. We got more to come. Um, keep copping the CD. Keep buying the digital. Keep streaming. Keep listening to it. There's more uh -huh. gems. If you found some gems, go deep dig it. There's a diamond inside that gem. It's like a Russian doll. So just, you know, keep scraping this, the, the surface, and I think you'll find something that will be rewarded by. Nice. Look yeah, at that, yeah. man. 
Well, that wraps it up here on Call Out Culture. Why do you do that, Casey Kasem voice? Like, no, it's from fucking, that? it's the ESPN voice in between uh, PTI and um, all those shows. Oh, yeah, it's that dude. Tony yeah. Ravello yeah. or whatever his name is. Yeah, and then yeah, they'd, be, they'd yeah. be like, they'd be like, pardon the interruption brought to you by Red Stripe. Yeah, whatever the fuck yeah, they would right. say. Yeah, that's that's that shit. To me, I always think of Casey Kasem when he was signing nah, off. He would be nah. that little juke. You remember? Keep the, your feet uh, on the ground and that. keep reaching for the stars. And then remember, he started doing that little jukebox like on Channel Four or something yep. like late, and it would be like yeah. a top ten, yeah, of his own making or whatever. Yeah, I remember. Fuck, I'm wilding out. Yeah, it's your man. All right. Well, live All from right. the liner notes, Curly Castro, little Robert Hutton. You know what I'm saying? Here. In the bag. Motherfucking in the bag. So peace um, to the God, rest in and and um, paradise, little Bobby. Little Bobby. And, um, I hope I made you know the people that be the, the spirit of the Black Panther Party proud. That's what that was my goal. He definitely did, bro. I think he did. Carry it on. And shout out to you for putting so many fucking white people on this album, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. There's some allyship <laughs> going on on this joint, man. You know, I gave y'all a shout. Yo, you know me, Griff, fucking Alaska. That's Prem four, Locust five, five whiteies in this album. Don't count. You're gonna see six. There's six. There's six. Shout out to you, man. Like the MC5, six man. <laughs> MC5. The MC5. The MC5. Going to jig on the going to course. We got, we got we got six six white dudes holding the fucking blackest album of the year down. We're on this shit. You know what I mean? Look at you. Look at you making this about you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, keep counting. This, this, you ain't gonna That's like it. the numbers. I just got you. six. That's yeah, it. Yeah, you ain't gonna like six. the numbers when you add up how many other people are. All right, right black yeah. guys. Uh, all right. What? Oh, no. Yeah. Dose 4 GW. Seven. Ooh. Yeah, great. I think that's keep, it, right? Keep, keep doing the arithmetic. I think that's it. It's it is definitely like the most woke thing to do. <laughs> like the most white woke person thing to do is to make it about us. It's, why? Of course, we're we're the allies out here, bro. Without <laughs> us, I mean, you know, I don't think. Uh, no, just cut kidding. all of this fucking shit off. Just cut it. <laughs> Astro, you know what the Black Panther, uh, Black Afrofuturism movement needs? White guys like us. Yeah. That's what it needs. To, you know, to help you guys out. You know, clearly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the audience can hear my face. <laughs> Castro's not happy about this part of the show. I wouldn't this part out. I'm just saying, clear, clearly, with all the black futurism power needs, white people like us jumping on board. Definitely, you need a shirt, too. White people like us. White people like us. <laughs> <laughs>